Hello and thank you for joining our webinar this morning. In this webinar we will be focusing on Sophos Unified Threat Management. We have Helen Murphy here from Bytes and Jonathan Hope from Sophos who will be going through the webinar with you. Thanks a lot Amy. Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Helen Murphy and I work on our vendor solutions team and form part of your wider account management team at Bytes. As well as highlighting the points on this slide, I just wanted to explain the reason behind today's webinar. So as Microsoft's largest licensing solutions provider, we are finding a lot of our customers looking to us for assistance in finding a replacement for Microsoft's TMG, which is now end of life and due to be end of support next year. Bytes have investigated various options to fill this gap, hence we would like to introduce Sophos as the perfect solution to offer our customers that are proactively looking to replace their Microsoft TMG installations. So Bytes are currently providing the full portfolio of Sophos solutions from endpoint, mobile to network security, and being a platinum partner, we have a great relationship with the Sophos team across the board. We can also provide services through our trusted partner ecosystem and using one of Sophos's preferred services-only partners. So I'll now hand over to Jonathan Hope, who can explain more. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to echo the sentiments. Thank you very much indeed for taking time out of your day to join us. Uh, and just a reminder that if you do have any questions as you go through, then please use the dialog box on the right-hand side, and we'll get to those at the end of the session. So yes, uh, Microsoft TMG. Um, what I'm going to do today is um, basically take you through um, some of the, uh, the facts around TMG, um, some of the things that made it a good product, um, some of the things that maybe not so good, we'll review the status of TMG, and then we'll move on to look at Sophos UTM. Um, we'll have a quick overview of the product, um, we'll have a look at um, a feature comparison to, to cross-reference the two things, and then at the end of the session I'll wrap up with a few suggestions of how you can potentially take your interests forward and uh, we'll finally wrap up with a question and answer session. Okay, so TMG, where does it come from? Well, TMG has its origins way back in uh, the Microsoft ISA platform and it's now currently part of the forefront range. And um, TMG is primarily uh, deployed as a firewall solution, but it does also have elements around web content filtering, IPS, remote access capabilities, and critically reverse proxy function. It will normally sit at the edge of your network, although that's not always the case. Sometimes it will sit behind another perimeter firewall, possibly a physical uh, hardware firewall. It will certainly sit in front of uh, your internal users and also possibly uh, any web services that you're um, hosting and, and uh, publishing out to the outside world, um, particularly things like Exchange and SharePoint are quite common. Um, it is a software-only solution, although it can be virtualized and it can run in a Hyper-V environment. Um, so, what are the things that made TMG a success and, and what do customers like about it? Well, hopefully you can uh, um, draw some parallels with the list that I've put here. Um, but some of the key things that people liked is, is, is the fact that it's, it's got that, that firewall function. It has um, nice, simple IPS deployment. It actually has some anti-spam functions as well as web content filtering. Um, options to connect in multiple sites using site-to-site -site VPNs and the ability to hook into users out in the field using client-side VPNs. And of course, the reverse proxy function to allow um, safe and secure access to resources that are inside the network. Okay, so strengths and weaknesses. Um, a lot of people like the fact that TMG is, is relatively easy to set up. Um, it does have a familiar Windows sort of look and feel around it. Um, and of course, as a Microsoft product, as you would expect, it does integrate extremely well with other Microsoft technologies. Um, so things like Active Directory for user authentication, and I've already touched on um, the ability to publish Exchange in SharePoint via TMG. Um, one of the other key strengths is the reverse proxy function. I've touched on that a couple of times already. Um, the reason that one is such a high strength is that it's typically very difficult to find a product that will actually do that. There's not a huge number of reverse proxy solutions out there, and those that do exist are typically quite expensive and quite difficult to deploy, and TMG made it quite simple to offer that reverse proxy service. 
Um, the flip side to this, some of the weaknesses, well, in fairness, Microsoft is not a dedicated security company, um, so one of the, the common weaknesses that people highlight is that although it is a security solution, maybe it's not the most um, deep and, and all-encompassing security solution. I'll give you just one example of that. The intrusion prevention service that um, you'll find on TMG, it only looks for known vulnerabilities in other Microsoft platforms. So it's not considering the wider world of, uh, of other devices such as, um, such as Macs or Linux machines or various different servers outside of the Microsoft portfolio. So just an example really of where maybe the, the security isn't as good as it potentially could be. Um, it can get a little bit difficult to manage over time, um, particularly if you've got a, a, um, a multiple office environment. There's no option for centralized management with TMG, so it can be a little bit difficult to maintain in the state. Um, limited customization, um, Microsoft um, in their defense tried to make the solution as easy to manage as possible um, and um, they've done a pretty good job of doing that but the, the flip side to that is that maybe you, there's not so many bells and whistles and, and, and dials to tweak to your own requirements so um, you know it's not quite so easy to actually deploy that in, in, in exactly the way that you might like. Um, it does also have a limited range of VPN options so site to site is only IPsec and um, remote offices, it's either SSL or IPsec, but on a limited range of devices. And then finally, limited um, reporting capabilities. The logging in fairness and TMG is actually very, very good indeed. But unfortunately, turning that into a report that you could uh, pick up and read in a, in a simple fashion, um, there's not a huge amount of reporting capabilities in TMG. So maybe that, again, is one of the weaknesses. Okay, so why are we here and, um, and, and why are we discussing TMG? Well, in simple terms, um, it's discontinued. Um, it, it's become end of life. Microsoft have decided not to continue with, with the TMG platform. Um, it was actually scheduled for end of support um, within the next few days, but uh, Microsoft have decided to add an extra year's grace in on that. Um, but it does still mean, of course, that the product is not being developed any further, so um, you know, potentially new features and functions um, that would be coming down the pipe and, and are never going to reach um, the street. And um, it does mean it's not going to be updated, of course, um, you know, for, for significant security changes. They'll be patched and whatever, but no, no further advances in that level of functionality. So that means it's time to start looking for an alternative. And um, you, you're not on your own. Um, as uh, my colleagues at Bytes already mentioned, of course, they've had to go through a process of looking for an alternative solution. Lots of other resellers in the ride community have done the same thing. And of course, customers like yourselves uh, are also looking for alternatives. Um, what did Microsoft say about this? Well, Microsoft had originally suggested that the UAG or Universal Access Gateway is a potential replacement, although I, I do believe that, that that product may also be going the same way as TMG. Um, in reality, unless you're using TMG for a limited set of functions, then the UAG doesn't really offer a replacement because UAG is all about remote access. Um, it's not really a gateway security product. So unless you're using a very limited set of the TMG functions, then, then UAG really doesn't kind of cut it. So let's have a look at Sophos UTM. And, um, Let's have a look at why we feel that that is a, an ideal alternative product. Um, and first of all, I'm going to touch on the way that the, the UTM is actually licensed. So we have a flexible licensing system at Sophos that allows you to add in multiple subscription services onto the product, really to, to add to the level of protection that you actually need. Um, the Sophos UTM always starts out as the essential firewall. So this is a basic packet filter firewall um, with, with NAT functionality. Um, but then you can add in additional subscription services around there to augment the functionality to cover what you really need. And um, those modules are network protection, which offers um, IPS capabilities, site-to-site um, -site VPNs using um, IPsec, SSL, as well as our own um, uh, remote Ethernet device, which is a branch office extending product. Um, we also offer um, client-based VPN services um, for um, IPsec devices, SSL, um, 
remote access clients for things like Windows, Linux, Mac, Solaris, as well as mobile platforms like iOS and Android. There's even a clientless VPN service on the box. So if you want people to be able to access corporate resources uh, in an ad hoc fashion um, by either using their own personal computers at home, for example, or um, if you've got execs out in the field and they, they grab a terminal at a kiosk or uh, at a hotel, for example, then um, then you can use a clientless VPN service to create that ad hoc connection. And the network protection subscription also includes things like multiple WAN balancing as well as quality of service. So you can highlight traffic types that you feel are important and, and give those priority. Another subscription service that we have is the web protection subscription. And that one is all about how your users are actually um, using the internet. So it includes things like a web content filter. Um, it includes application control as part of that web content filter. So the UTM recognizes nearly a thousand applications and you can put controls around how those applications are actually used. Um, it features antivirus scanning. Um, and actually has two AV engines in there, so we have the Sophos engine as you would expect, but we also have a, an OEM relationship with uh, another AV company which is Avera. So if you want defense in depth and have multiple AV engines in your network, then that's possible. Uh, the web protection subscription also includes um, a, a comprehensive reporting suite um, and you can actually see how users are uh, using the internet, how they're spending their time, how they're spending their bandwidth. And we also feature an email protection subscription. Uh, another service here, obviously this is interested in emails, um, primarily dealing with uh, the issues around spam and phishing. Also um, controlling attachment types, um, so you can um, potentially strip uh, unwanted attachments. Uh, again, we have antivirus for so using the, the dual AV system. And the system also features uh, email encryption. Um, so there's two forms of encryption. Uh, one of them is a site-to-site -site encryption. Um, where the remote mail server also has to be configured to receive that, but we also have an on-demand encryption service which is called SPX, and that will basically wrap up a sensitive email into a PDF, um, slap a passcode lock on there, and it means that the recipient just needs to have a PDF viewer, which uh, of course is readily available, and then the passcode lock, so it means that any other authorized recipients along the way, they're not going to be able to see that data. And then finally, the email protection service also offers a, a DLP function, um, so that's data loss prevention. Uh, basically, there are a number of tick boxes in the UTM, and you can select data that you think is sensitive and, and either alert users or potentially block users from sending traffic. So things like credit card data, social security details are just a couple of examples of that. Uh, the next module we have is the Web Server Protection module. Now this one basically um, mirrors the reverse proxy functionality of TMG, and um, this basically breaks the connection for internal services um, and, and puts a layer of isolation in there. So the UTM is defending internal services like Exchange, SharePoint, your own company website, for example. Um, it also features a web application firewall, so it's looking for common uh, threats, things like SQL injections, cross-site scripting, that kind of thing. And um, in 9.2, which is the latest release, we also feature that reverse authentication service as well, which you would have found in TMG. So it means that users don't even get to see the web server until they've actually authenticated against the UTM. So, of course, that's adding an extra layer of security in. And then we have a, a wireless subscription service, um, and that basically turns the UTM into a wireless controller. You can deploy Sophos access points across your building, um, and they can potentially broadcast up to eight different wireless networks. You can have things like guest services to isolate visitors from your core network activity. Now, each of the subscription services that you can see on the screen there, you can take those individually, or you can take a package which we call FullGuard, and as you would expect, FullGuard basically um, is all of those services wrapped in together. There is quite a significant cost saving for going down that road. But the nice thing with having this flexible system is that you can add in those additional modules when you need to. And then finally, as an additional extra into the UTM, Sophos, of course, is best known for its endpoint um, technology, and it's possible to add in endpoint uh, licenses to the UTM and basically turn the UTM into a management console for those endpoints. And that will um, deploy an endpoint onto the client uh, that will act, obviously, as the AV client, also um, 
do device control, so you control what types of devices can be plugged into it, for example, controlling things like USB sticks. And um, it also features an innovative little bit of technology, which is web, it's, we call it web and endpoint. Basically, um, this allows um, the enforcement of web content filtering rules, even when the device has left the organization. So when the device is inside the building, the web content filtering is dealt with by the UTM. But if you take that device out of the building, you take it to your favorite coffee shop, for example, or you take it home, then traditionally, um, users could basically use that device to browse whatever they fancied, but um, with this innovative technology, the endpoint will actually enforce the same policies as if the user was in the building, and it also has a, um, a reporting feedback loop in there as well, so all of the great reports, and I'll show you some examples later on, that you would see if the user was actually in the building, you can see the same level of detail even when users are actually out of the office and um, their traffic isn't even going anywhere near the UTM, but we can still see how, they, how they're using the web and how they're spending their time. Okay, so I'm not going to take you too far into the management console today, but I wanted to give you a couple of examples here on the screen just to show you that the idea of the UTM is that it's relatively easy to, to operate. Um, it has a nice clean interface, as you can see here, and uh, much like TMG, it has a, um, an object-orientated approach. Um, so um, basically once you've created objects, it's a process of dragging and dropping to create um, policies, which, which does make the process a lot more straightforward. We also mentioned as well about the reporting capabilities, so here's just a couple of examples of some of the reports that we can see. So things like top applications and use top application categories, top sites by time, top users by time, is just a couple of examples. Um, there's even a um, a search engine report capability, and that will actually recognize uh, the context of a search engine and will report on what your users have searched for. And while that might seem a little bit voyeuristic at first, it's worth understanding that um, you know users, um, they could potentially be looking for ways around your security. So we often see searches for things like, how do I bypass web content filtering? How do I go to my PC at home, for example? So. Um, it is a very, very useful tool to understand what users are up to, and, and it helps to identify any, um, any fence testers. Okay, so let's cross-reference what I've just shown you against TMG. So, um, first of all, one of the highlights was the Hyper-V support, and with Sophos, um, of course, we do also um, have similar deployment options, so you can deploy it as a software solution just like TMG. It doesn't need an underlying operating system, it doesn't need a server license, it comes with its own OS. Um, you can virtualize it, not only within Hyper-V, but you can also virtualize it within VMware, um, KVM, Citrix, Zen Server, um, basically any uh, hypervisor technology the, the UTM will work with, but those are the supported options. Um, it is also possible to deploy the whole solution out in the cloud, um, so that's basically taking a virtual machine and running it up in a data center somewhere rather than actually have it physically on your site. And then, of course, um, as, a, as a security solution, it's most commonly sold as a hardware device, so should you wish to, um, you can purchase a Sophos branded piece of hardware and then run the UTM solution on there. Um, from a features and functions point of view, it doesn't matter which route you go down, um, the platform is exactly the same, it's just a personal choice around deployment. Okay, so then we looked at the firewall, uh, the, the stateful packet inspection, the UTM of course features that as part of its basic operation. Um, we do also have some advanced routing capabilities in there, and the country blocking, which is basically a, a, a firewall based on geography, so you can say which countries you do and, and don't want to send traffic to. So firewalling hasn't really changed much, but that's a little bit of an innovation there in the Sophos UTM. Okay, so with the TMG, you've got the intrusion prevention service. The Sophos UTM, as I've already mentioned, has that IPS function as part of its network protection subscription, but covers a much broader range of um, operating systems and platforms. So we have in excess of 11,000 IPS signatures, and that's all backed up by the research that happens with a live protect service that you, you basically get from Sophos Labs. Um, so you've then got the um, exchange anti-spam, uh, anti-malware capability within TMG. Anti-spam functionality, of course, embedded within the UTM as well. No reliance on it being a Microsoft platform. If you've got a mail server from somewhere else, that's absolutely fine. It uses two standard protocols, which are SMTP and POP3. Um, the system also features its own inbuilt user quarantine area. Um, so users can actually go to that quarantine area and they can go and manage their spam area for themselves. Um, that actually is... Uh, 
part of the same deployment. So it sits on the hardware box, it sits in the virtual machine, so there's no need for external servers to make that happen. And I've already touched on the DLP functionality and the email encryption capabilities as well, just to add in some extra functions there. So the TMG features redundancy capabilities. The UTM, of course, can do that. We have an innovative approach to high availability that allows you to basically bring two devices together and they automatically form up a cluster. Um, you can run them in active-active as well as active-passive. Um, so you can have the, those two boxes working together, sharing the load. And um, we also feature the ability to, to do WAN redundancy as well. So we can have multiple internet connections coming into the box and, and have redundancy for that as well. So the logging and reporting capabilities of TMG called out as a bit of a weakness. It's actually a strength of the Sophos UTM. Um, so we have um, some really good reports. I've shown you some of those graphic reports. Those are completely customizable. So you can narrow it down to departments, to individuals, to times, that sort of thing. It's all, it's all possible to, to, to customize that view down. And it's also drilled down as well. So while you're in the management interface, you can actually click through um, those reports, actually go to the next layer of information. Not only that, but you can also have the UTM actually distribute those reports automatically. So once you've created a report that you like the look of, you can then use the UTM for basically just generate those reports and email those out to where they need to be automatically. So that saves you as the IT team a lot of time and effort because you don't have to go in there and generate those reports manually. It just becomes a, a regular task for the UTM. <clears throat> okay, so we talked about um, remote access VPN services. On TMG, limited really to PPTP and L2TP, which are considered to be outdated technologies. Um, with the Sophos UTM, you can add in um, some more modern functions, things like SSL and the clientless VPN service, uh, the HTML5 portal, so for ad hoc access. Um, site to site VPNs, of course, also supporting the Sophos UTM. We support SSL site to site as well as IPsec. Um, but we do also have um, connections into uh, the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, so if any of you are using the Amazon um, network as an extension of your own, then we have a connector for the VPC. And then finally, we have our innovative little red device, a remote Ethernet device, which is a, an on-demand branch office uh, device that you can just send out to a, um, an external location, a, a branch office, and it will automatically form a connection back to headquarters. Um, in the TMG, of course, you have web content filtering. Um, we have slightly higher numbers of categories in the Sophos UTM, um, but um, the, the key things here really are the fact that we also feature reputation scores as well, so it's a real-time classification of the trustworthiness of websites. We have customizable categories. Uh, we can reclassify um, websites locally, so if you disagree with the way that we've classified a website, you can change that locally. And of course, those policies can be applied to users, groups, different times. Um, different circumstances like which network they're attached to, for example. So lots of really good flexibility there around the web content filtering. Um, and also augmented with our application control. So nearly a thousand applications recognized and you can control in a lot of cases sub functions of applications. Um, so for example, um, Facebook is split out into 13 different application signatures and you can separately control how Facebook is used. So if you want to block people from playing games on Facebook, but allow them to log on so they can manage your um, corporate Facebook presence, then, then you have that flexibility. Um, AV scanning in the TMG, of course, um, replicated in the, the Sophos UTM, but also with that dual engine capability, so the ability to run a different AV engine or run two AV engines together. So if you're an existing Sophos customer for your endpoint and you're thinking about putting Sophos UTM at the gateway, if you want to have a different AV engine, that's perfectly possible. It doesn't cost any more to switch on that dual engine capability. Um, of course, there is a performance impact, and, and we would have to take that into account while we're helping you size up the device. Um, but, um, yeah, no additional cost to switch that on. Um, the ability to scan into HTTPS, um, traditionally quite a security black hole. Um, TMG did have the ability to scan into HTTPS, um, and we can do the same, but we can also do it in a transparent mode, so it doesn't have to be an explicit proxy on your network to be able to scan into HTTPS if you wish. Um, we do feature a broad range of user authentication services as well, so as well as Active Directory, which of course is by far and away the most common choice, you can also run user authentication against things like eDirectory, um, LDAP, Radius. Um, there's even, uh, in 9.2, we've even introduced two-factor authentication to the device as well. Um, so 
Um, this is a one-time passcode system, uh, and we, we plug into services like the Google Authentication app, which is free of charge to, for users to generate their one-time passcodes on their mobile devices. Um, although we can integrate with, with other hardware tokens as well, as long as they support the um, OATH standard, um, then we can integrate with those tokens as well if you wish. And then finally, getting on to the key features of uh, TMG that have made it so popular, really, the reverse proxy function mirrored in the UTM, but also adding in the, the web application firewall server hardening functions. Um, just like TMG, we can also use the UTM to um, decrypt SSL um, sessions. That's taking the load off your web server and having the UTM actually deal with that. And then finally, we have the reverse proxy authentication service, and that is now available in the, in the current release. Um, that allows users to basically authenticate against the UTM before they are actually allowed access to the web servers. And uh, that can be used with the two-factor authentication service I touched on earlier as well. So if you want users to have to use a one-time passcode before they are allowed to log on to things like their webmail, for example, then um, all you really need is Sophos UTM with that um, the, the web server protection subscription enabled. Okay, so how do we do it better? Some of the key things that um, really just to summarize. First of all, much more flexible deployment options, software, virtualized, hardware, cloud. Um, also very easy to use, but still maintaining that customization and, and the power behind being able to, to tweak it to your exact requirements. Um, also, Sophos allows you to consolidate and simplify your, your wider security estate. So because it has so many functions, you can potentially eliminate other security solutions or the servers or the routers, you know, bringing things like your wireless functionality, your, your routers, um, your remote access solution. Um, so this really does allow you to consolidate your estate and of course that allows you to save both time and, and money um, by, by running more things on one platform. And it is a very much a security platform for the future. So at Sophos, we're constantly innovating. We're constantly adding in new functions. So we relatively recently added in wireless. We've added that red device in for the branch office capabilities. Um, we've innovated further by adding in the endpoint and the web and endpoint functions. And we continue to strive to bring in new features and functions. And of course, if you cross-reference that against Microsoft TMG, it has no future. You know, there's a bright future ahead for Sophos UTM. There is no future for TMG, so there's no further development going to happen on that platform. Of course, it's very easy for me at Sophos to tell you what a great product it is, and you'd expect me to say nothing less. Um, so what I wanted to also show you is um, a couple of uh, external references. And I'm going to start with this one. Uh, this is quite an interesting one. I'll let you read the quote for yourself, but this is by a chap called Alex here. Um, and he actually came to, to one of these Bytes um, webinars um, a couple of months ago and uh, was sufficiently interested in the product that um, uh, he contacted Bytes and wanted to progress that further forward. Long story short, I ended up going out to see him on site and um, he's just completed uh, the Sophos UTM solution. And he was in exactly the same situation as, as you. He was using a TMG for, for a broad range of functions and, and was kind of um, in the wilderness looking for an alternative solution. And um, through this webinar, he was introduced to Sophos UTM. He'd not seen it before, and it's gone all the way through now to actually deploy that solution. And he's a very happy customer, as you can see there. So um, yeah, just, just uh, an example there that would, I'm sure will be highly relevant for all of you. Not just that, but also um, the wider community, the analyst community. Um, this is a, um, a blog from the Netherlands, and um, it's a little while back now where Microsoft actually announced the um, um, end of support for, uh, for TMG. Um, they immediately went into to, um, panic mode and started looking around for alternatives as lots of their subscribers were actually using that service. And um, you can read the report for yourself, but um, they looked at Sophos UTM and, and it, they thought it stood head and shoulders above um, the competition in terms of an alternative solution. And some of the things that they um, called out as advantages are some of the same things that I've suggested. So um, the support for multiple platforms, the ease of use, the quality of the reporting, um, the modularity of the device. So um, I'll encourage you to go and have a look at that, that review for yourself. But um, it's interesting to see that they were recognizing the same things that we, we felt were strengths for Sophos UTM. Okay, um, so 
that pretty much wraps up the content that I wanted to show you um, today, um, other than really to give you some ideas about how you can progress um, your interest, and hopefully there's a few points on there that have, uh, have, have piqued your interest. Um, so first of all, it's worth knowing we do have special deals available for, for people like yourselves with a TMG solution that are looking to replace that. We have some really, really great resources online to allow you to um, understand the process of replacing TMG. There's a really good replacement guide. Now, I also appreciate that I've not really shown you too much of the UTM from a technical perspective. So, um, if you're interested to see how the device actually is managed and, and how it works, then we do run um, bi-weekly technical uh, overviews at Sophos, and that typically happens on a Friday. And um, Either myself or one of my colleagues will take you through the user interface on a much more in-depth level, in a technical level, uh, and allow you to understand how that works. Of course, alternatively, what you could do is run a trial of the UTM, and uh, you can access that by uh, getting in touch with your account manager at Bytes, and they'll arrange for um, a download, typically, of our software, a virtual machine. And um, you can have a play with that. You get 30 days to have a tinker with that with it fully featured. And of course, if you're interested in things like pricing and licensing, then um, please uh, contact your account manager at Bytes, and they'll be happy to, to, to discuss the licensing options with you, and uh, also assist you if you're thinking about a hardware deployment, about which sort of platform it is that you need, and, uh, and, and the size of that appliance. So they'll be able to help you out with all of those things. Okay, I will also leave with my contact details as well. Um, of course. So I will remind you that you do have the opportunity to ask questions by using the chat dialog box on the right hand side uh, and now's a really good time to get typing if you've got any questions you want answering immediately. Um, alternatively, if you want to get in contact with me directly then you're very welcome to do that after the demonstration and uh, I'll leave my details up there just for a few seconds for you to, to, to take a screen grab or take some notes. Okay, uh, and that pretty much wraps up uh, what I wanted to, to show you. So um, if I hand back to my colleagues at Bytes, if there's any questions within the, uh, in the dialog box there that need addressing, then if you could read those out, that would be absolutely fantastic, please. Okay, thank you, John. And yes, if you do have any questions, if you could please just pop them into the questions box and John will answer those for you shortly. Okay, so our first question, John, uh, mm -hmm. we have here is, does this device inc include posture checking for device and user? Mm, posture checking, okay, an interesting term, I've not heard that before. Um, so. I don't know if it's possible to um, either contact me afterwards just to explain that in a bit more depth. It's not a function I'm familiar with, or if you fancy typing quickly, then you can <laughs> uh, add that into the box. But it, that's not a term I've, I've really heard of before, I'm afraid. Okay, and the next question uh, is, how does UTM work with PepLink device? Mm, PepLink, okay, that's, <laughs> I don't know where these questions are coming from, but that's another one that I've not heard of, I'm afraid. Um, I don't know if that's some kind of um, software solution. Is that something you're familiar with at all? doesn't ring a bell with me, I'm afraid. Maybe another one to contact me afterwards on, I think. Yes, yes, I think it'd be one for, for, for them to contact you afterwards. So the next question we have... Is for environments that have historically expanded under the guidance of different <clears throat> departments, there tends to be an opportunity to consolidate specialist products into a single or unified product, such as your mm -hmm. offering. But this will lead yep. to compare and contrast for advertised, advertised features against specialist vendors. Examples, proof point for email protection, Cisco iron port for web proxy, mobile iron for mobile feature. <clears throat> Do you have any information about how your product features stack against other vendor offerings? Okay, um, yeah, that's probably a bit too in-depth to, to, you know, to answer you know, the specifics of it right now, but what I can sort of give you as a, as a rough overview is the fact that, um, of course, the Sophos UTM solution is, is a unified device and it it does you know, feature a lot of individual uh, functions on there, but we could realistically never hope to cope 
um, in, in a direct competition against dedicated security solutions in a lot of cases. But that doesn't mean that we don't have a place, um, because in a lot of cases, while the, the feature list might be very, very long for these dedicated point solutions, the reality is that most customers don't actually use most of those functions. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is, um, is really review your security estate and look at which features and functions it is that you actually need, because um, what we do at Sophos really is, is you know, we look at the real world uh, requirements, the real world um, needs, and actually develop products that fulfill those. So we don't necessarily have every single bell and whistle against all of our competition um, for individual point solutions, but we do overall produce a solution that covers the security needs that you actually have. And of course, because it's a unified device, then it is going to save you a lot of time and more importantly, of course, you know, budget money associated with actually deploying a security estate. So you know, realistically, there is a compromise to be had and uh, you know we, we fully accept that but we, we do feel that uh, in a lot of cases taking the unified route is, is a much more sensible approach because it, it's much more affordable and um, and a much less complicated solution to deploy as well so um, I hope that answers the, 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 the crux of the question you're asking there about individual um, rivals and we do also feature a number of um, battle cards on our website um, and if you talk to the people at Bytes, then they'll be able to get that information in front of you. So certain rival products we, we've looked at in more depth, and um, we've produced battle cards that are pretty fair and, and, and give a highlight of where we're strong, and you know, we also acknowledge where potentially the competition is strong in certain areas as well. So that will help you have a, a little look through there. But if you've got a particular vendor or, or, or set of vendors in mind, then I'd be happy to, to take a look at that with you, and we can see where we, where we win out against those solutions. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, we have a few more questions. Uh, this one says, we use TMG and WebSense mm -hmm. and have numerous site exceptions on WebSense. Mm -hmm. Can they be imported into UTM in some form? Yep. Um, that depends on your solution um, to, a, to an extent. I mean, certainly exceptions are possible. Um, either by um, domain or by subdomain or even down to individual pages. There's local reclassification options inside the UTM. Um, worst case scenario, you'd have to port those over manually. Um, but if you can export it as a text file um, or as a, uh, an XML file, then it's possible to import um, the exceptions list to an extent into the UTM. Um, again, it might be something that I maybe need to show you after the, after the session. Um, but it is possible to import certain text elements um, if you can export it out of your solution in that fashion. But the functionality, yes, of course, we can mirror that, no problem. Okay, and the next question is, can you elaborate a bit more on two-factor auth authentication, please, compatible services, etc.? Yep. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay, first of all, the two-factor service um, itself is a base function of the UTM now. So um, uh, as soon as you, you, you purchase a UTM, then, then you have access to that. What you can actually use that two-factor authentication for depends on what other services you're using on the UTM. Um, so for example, if you're using the UTM for remote access capabilities, then you can use the two-factor service as, uh, as an authentication step for, for two-factor users. Um, if, for example, you're using it as a reverse proxy and you've got a, um, a website or a web server behind there, um, such as your um, exchange server, then again you can use the two-factor service to authenticate users against that service before they're allowed access to it. Um, it can also be used for more mundane tasks like actually administering the UTM itself. So rather than protecting the user interface of the UTM with just a static password, you can insist that users have two-factor authentication as well. So there's lots of different places that you can use it. Um, it just depends on uh, exactly what you're using the UTM for. In terms of the way that it works, um, it's we support a standard called OATH, uh, which is a time-based um, authentication service. And um, the most common technology partner for this is uh, the Google Authentication app, um, which is actually free of charge. And basically, that has a, a seed record, um, which is um, unique to each individual deployment and then the UTM works out a one-time passcode based on the current time date and the seed record associated to the individual user and the users basically have 60 seconds to enter the code that they see on their mobile device 
Um, and obviously that passcode then is only valid for those 60 seconds and at the end of 60 seconds a new code is generated and um, uh, it means that if somebody were to sniff or, or shoulder surf and get that password it's, it's no good after 60 seconds. Um, so like I said Google authentication services are typically the most common platform and that allows mobile devices like Windows or uh, sorry, um, iOS or Android devices to become mobile tokens. Um, other services that we can work with, hardware tokens, if they support the same kind of time-based service using the OATH, then we can use the same seed record and we can anticipate the token code that will be displayed on a physical piece of hardware as well. So a um, little bit less common to do that. The, you know, most, most people have taken the view of the fact, well, if I can use a mobile device which I've already got and already paid for as a token, I don't need to invest in separate hardware tokens. But um, some people are a bit more kind of familiar with the hardware token system and want to keep that, so we can integrate with that as well. So those are the two different options. Um, very simple to deploy. Um, users can actually um, set up their devices in an area called the user portal, and it'll basically throw up a QR code on the screen, and they just scan it with their device, and that will load um, the authentication profile into the device. So it's uh, very, very simple to use. And um, yeah, not too much of a, a learning curve to get your user switched on to that service. Okay, thank you, John. We have another question um, which says, who do you see as your main competitors? Okay, um, great question. Um, our competitors really are primarily other UTM devices. So the, the people that we, we sell against a lot are people like Fortinet, SonicWall, um, Checkpoint, um, but by virtue of the fact that we do so many functions, then we also compete directly against web content filtering solutions, wireless solutions, anti-spam solutions. So, you know, we do we, we do find ourselves competing against lots of different um, individual vendors. But um, our key competition really are people that have the same philosophy as us about bringing these separate security solutions together. And, and so those are people like Fortinet, um, WatchGuard. And, um, and how we compete against those is, is largely on the, the, the functions and the ease of use. Um, so we, don't, we try not to play a price battle with these people. We'd, we'd rather produce a solution which is replete with features and a usable security platform, but also one that's easy to use. Um, so that's our kind of key um, driving force and, and how we see ourselves as a, as a differentiated UTM offering. Okay, and that question was from Kevin, who's also asked to be um, if we could send him a link to these to the battle cards. Um, and yes, yes, we can do that. Uh, so the next question is: uh, So can UTM work with ADSL balancer devices that have built-in firewall? Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm going to split the two questions. Well, I'm going to split the question out into two separate entities. So, um, first of all, can we work with an ADSL with an integrated firewall? Yes, we can. Um, ideally, you move the UTM up to the, the gateway, and it owns your first public IP address. But if that's not possible for whatever reason, then we would typically recommend disabling the ADSL firewall. Uh, um, just because there's no real point having and two sets of firewalls, and it just brings in complication. Um, to answer the next question about load balancing, um, well, load balancing can be achieved in one of two different ways on the UTM. If it's possible to bring each line in individually, then the UTM can act as a load balancer and it can work out for itself where to send traffic. If you've got an external load balancer already, then basically the UTM is just going to see that as one internet connection and the balancer then does the same job that it's been doing previously of actually sorting out the traffic for you. So. Um, we can work in either of those two, two, two modes. Okay, and the next question says, would this replace our forefront ADFS and what advantage give us now we have our emails in Microsoft Office 365? Okay, so um, moving out to, to 365 um, for your email, um, does kind of render the, the email functionality of the UTM um, somewhat redundant because um, obviously Microsoft are dealing with all of the spam and the viruses and whatever out in the cloud. So there's no real point in enabling um, email services actually on the UTM itself as that's been handled somewhere else. But as you've already seen, there's lots of other different functions that the UTM can offer as well. So that there's um, 
and plenty of scope for the UTM to be doing other jobs that still need to happen actually in the, in the corporate environment and actually on your network itself. So the basics of perimeter defense, the basics of web content filtering can all still happen, of course, on your network. So um, there's plenty of other things that it can be doing. And of course, because of the modular approach, um, if you don't need the email service, then maybe there's no point in buying that module and um, and uh, you can reinvest that, that budget somewhere else. So, yeah, great question, but uh, as you've seen, there's lots of different functions it can handle, so um, there's, there's still plenty of scope for you to get some benefit out of the UTM. Okay, and the next question is, does this device have the ability to check whether or not a corporate device is connecting, i.e., is AV up to date, does the PC have an identifiable feature such as an, an internal PKI certificate? Um, okay, so at the moment we don't do a huge amount of endpoint assessment, um, you know, for, for, for things like remote access capabilities, um, a dedicated remote access solution might actually have the ability to, to make sure those things are all happening before those updates occur. Uh, or before um, connectivity is actually granted, but um, we don't. Unfortunately, we don't do those kind of scanning actually on the UTM at this this point in time. Um, the only exception to that, of course, is if you deploy Sophos's own endpoint um, from the UTM, then we can see that that is successfully updating, and um, we can make sure that that is is a compliant device. Um, one thing that we are looking to do, um, which is quite an interesting direction. Um, very, very shortly, we'll be integrating the UTM to an extent with our own mobile control application. Um, so this is the first step into this kind of territory. And um, what we're going to do is um, give um, SMC, Sophos Mobile Control, the ability to push out things like wireless profiles associated to the UTM um, to devices under management. So if you choose to manage your devices with Sophos and then run a Sophos UTM and, for example, run a wireless network, then you can push that wireless profile out to those devices. You can also push out remote access capabilities to those devices as well. So if you have a VPN back to the UTM um, using those mobile devices. And then critically, the SMC, the Sophos mobile control, uh, is constantly assessing the device to make sure that it's still compliant to corporate policy. and that will integrate into the UTM so that if the device is no longer compliant, then it will actually potentially cut that service off. So for example, if you have a policy that says all of my iOS devices are not to be jailbroken, if one of your users does decide to jailbreak their device, then the UTM will actually um, remove their wireless privileges and remove their remote access privileges until that device comes back into compliance. Um, so it's, it's a direction that we're moving into, but uh, that's not currently available. It will be available in conjunction with SMC. Hopefully, within the next couple of months, we're going to have that service available. So that's just the first step in the direction that you're alluding to. Okay, and the next question is, does this have any IPv6 to IPv4 conversion capability from internet to internal network? Okay, good question, and uh, yeah, emphatically, yes, IPv6 is something that we've been working on at Sophos for a long time. Um, one of the um, key markets for, for Sophos uh, UTM, actually, is the um, Asia-Pacific market, where IPv6 is, is already a reality for high numbers of users. So we've been working really hard to make sure IPv6 is, is good to go, and I can say that we have complete feature parity between uh, IPv4 and IPv6 services, and we do have um, broker services, tunnel services to allow the integration between two different types of network as well. So yeah, we, we've got that base completely covered, and we're we're actually certified as being IPv6 ready as well. Okay, and the next question: Does the clientless VPN option provide a replacement path for migration from for forefront UAG? Um, in, in a large number of cases, yes. Um, I mean, the basics of it are that you, you access things like RDP, VNC, Telnet, SSH, uh, or web services through a, a portal service. Um, um, the UAG, I believe, does have some forms of um, endpoint assessment, which I've already mentioned we don't actually feature, but the nuts and bolts are very, very similar. Um, and through our two-factor authentication service, then we actually go a bit of a stage further because you can insist on having a two-factor code um, for users before they're actually granted um, access to those corporate resources. So yeah, similar sort of system with a, with a few extras. 
Okay, and the last question. If running multiple services and a license for all, is there a limitation to the amount of Hyper-V deployments? If bandwidth for a particular component was found to be a bottleneck, it would be nice to split it out. Okay, um, so the way that the UTM is licensed is, um, uh, first of all, it's modular. I've already showed you that, um, the way you have those different subscription services. So in certain circumstances, it might make sense to move certain services onto other Hyper-V installations. Alternatively, you can deploy multiple Hyper-V um, servers and, um, and run them as a, a logical single unit, even though it might be multiple physical pieces of hardware. Um, and how you license that kind of depends on exactly what you're looking to achieve. People will start off with active-passive typically and have one um, spare server basically sitting by just waiting in case there's an outage. But you can change that around to an active-active installation. You can actually have up to um, 16 nodes daisy-chained together um, so that it will actually share load between all of those um, those servers. Um, it does slightly change the way the product is licensed, but I don't necessarily want to go down that route of explaining too much detail on that just yet. But it is certainly possible to split the services out and run those on multiple physical platforms if, if that's a requirement. Okay, thank you, John. And that is all the questions we have today. So thank you, everyone, for joining us on this webinar.